two this week. I went one and seven in my eight. Paul and Steve, they roll the dice. Fantasy dreams ain't always nice. Crunching numbers late at night, seeking that glory shining bright. Touchdowns, fantasies on their mind. Draft day heroes hard to find. In the trenches week by week, every matchup fierce and sleek. That damn fantasy show where the created our dreams get sown. Passion, fire, blood, and gold. Chasing titles, claim the throne. Welcome in, Paul Catalina and Steve May with you here on That Damn Fantasy Show. Steve, let's dispense with the pleasantries. We have a lot to talk about. Yes. First off, you're in eight leagues. I'm in three leagues. <laughs> you went one and seven. I went one and two. That's right. So, so much for being experts this week. Although sometimes you can be the, all the expert you want and things don't go your way. Yeah. Um, I withstood a, a very poor uh, output from C.J. Stroud, to, in, um, thankfully for guys like – you know, T. Higgins uh, had a nice day. Um, Josh Downs also gave me a, a bunch of nothing. Yeah. But uh, Jalen Hurts helped me out. I, I had B. John Robinson had a very nice day and a loss. So I was okay there. In our league, like, the good news might be coming back to me here <laughs> if I can stay afloat. But I'm in 11th You've in the league. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm in 11th in the league, so I'm – I'm going to do is look at who uh, – so I'm in 7th. Uh, Jared is in six, so you need to see what. So there's really not a lot of uh, separation, and, and with the the median score, you know you can you can move up two games every week. But yeah, I had a rough week. I'm uh, heavily invested in Jane Daniels during all my drafts, mm-hmm. so he gets hurt early. Who knows what his status is? Uh, also invested in Anthony Richardson quite a bit. He's been subpar. Uh, Would you be, consider dropping him? Yes. Yep. Uh, in fact, I, I did in a in a smaller league where there were some uh, waiver options uh, out there. I, I did uh, make a switch because you know he he's not cracking twenty points a week, and that's what you really need from your uh, from your quarterback. And then uh, quick, what the hell, Cortland Sutton, uh, zero targets, zero points. And so in one league, I, I lost because of that. It was close, and he got me a goose egg, which was just, you know, unfathomable to even think. In a game where the Broncos scored a lot of points. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, yes. yeah, that's, up, that's upsetting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just one of those weeks. Uh, uh, the league I did win in, Scott Fishbowl, uh, which I'm doing very well. I'm in uh, the top 600 out of 4,000 players. Yeah. So feeling good about that one. Okay, well, good. Uh, happy with that. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple things before we get into the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Josh Downs, Michael Pittman, we just talked about that. I'm considering dropping both of them because I don't know how the passing game's going to work here with the Colts and just getting somebody who I can rely on each week to get me, like, four catches. Yeah, it's – you can drop them if there's somebody yeah. good to pick up. I would compare those two to what's been going on with Miami. You know, Tyreek Hill and Waddle have been unplayable. Yeah. With Huntley and uh, um, who knows? I guess Skyler Kula. Thompson and yeah, uh, whoever else is going to be back. I see the the Nats are still here this yeah. week. Yeah, they're, um, they're a little less. They're a little less, but yeah. So um, I've cut Josh Downs. I'm holding on to Pittman because um, he is the number one there, and there's probably not in a in a, a big league with 12 teams. There's probably not much out there but yeah you were, we're at the part of the year where most leagues were halfway uh you have 14 regular season weeks so you know uh, there's seven more weeks left so you really got to look at um who's helping you who's hurting you some of these injuries in san francisco now opens up do i go grab one of these guys or in uh, tampa you know you got both receivers out they throw it a ton mm-hmm. so there's some opportunity there do i pick up one of these guys and drop Someone like Downs. So. Yeah. All right. So, 
big news this week. Um, I just want to bring it up again that Derrick Henry is amazing, <laughs> uh, and they should build a statue of him in every city he's ever walked in. I don't know. He's just incredible, uh, and the Cowboys didn't sign him, so... I guess Jerry today said he would not have been doing that good. Well, look, it's kind of an admission of he's a little upset with the coaching staff. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, like that's like this is where he starts to plant the seed of I'm unhappy with all that's yes. gone on. Yeah. Um, it's not my fault for making the decision. It's their fault for not living up to my yeah. expectation. That's kind of how it goes. I'm, I'm in a mad at Jerry phase right now. Uh, I go through periods, mostly mad. <laughs> but right now, uh, but we don't have to talk about the Cowboys because they're yeah. not worth talking about. Um, you know, this week against the 49ers, that brings in the question of, like, this: if you're going to beat the 49ers, this is the time to do it. Debo Samuel's in the hospital this week, probably not going to play. I mean, like, I mean, I guess there's a, a thought that he could feel better and be available yeah. for Sunday night. Yeah. But wide receivers in Tampa Bay and in San Francisco right now, at a premium because they suffered a lot of injuries. Chris Godwin is done. Yep. Uh, so that means that you've got to look at Jalen McMillan yes. and Trey Palmer yep. uh, and Sterling Shepard, who is Baker Mayfield's bud. So yep. that's something to watch out for. Probably Kate Otten's stuff goes up too. Yep. Um, but who would you, out of those receivers... I'm, I'm big on uh, McMillan. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's shown flashes. Um, I do like Shepard. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, somebody there is going to have to step up. They're not going to change what they're doing. And Mike Evans is out until at least week 12. Yeah, I saw 11 today, but it's yeah. probably more like uh, yeah. 12. So, um, yeah, there's some opportunity there to go out. If you've been weak at receiver, you can go grab one of those guys and mm -hmm. they're... They're going to be starters. They're going to be a one or a two. Um, and then with the 49ers, you got Samuel, you got Ayuk out. Uh, I just traded Ayuk the week before in a league. I got rid of him, and then that happens. In another league, I just got Godwin, um, yeah. so it, it, it evens out. But So with 49ers, uh, Jennings, is he going to be healthy? You got Pearsall. Well, the thing is with Jennings, maybe not for this week, but long term, you got to have him because Ayuk's yeah. out. Yeah. So he's he's going to be the number two when he's back. Yeah. So that's why you've got to get Jennings if you can. Yeah. Um, now, if you can't spare the roster spot for him now because you, you've got other injuries, then you're not going to be in the Juwan Jennings business. Yeah. But if you can, do that because long term, that's something that could yeah. work out for you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody was high on Pearsall before he got shot. Yeah. And now I think he's healthy. So that's another uh, option there. George Kittle's value goes way up. He's also uh, a little banged, banged up. up. I know. So uh, I guess the uh, the McCaffrey uh, Calvary is coming uh, November tenth, is what they're saying. Yeah. So I know you're happy about that. I'm happy about that. <laughs> I'm also happy uh, in other uh, window news, which they have not opened McCaffrey's window just yet. Yeah. But they did. Uh, the Rams did open Puka Nakua's. Nakua. So that 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 should be good. And Cooper Cup is on the trade block. But, yeah, that was odd. Yeah. Uh, no, I think they want the picks. They need the picks. It's, they know it's time to. Well, you know, I'm sure I, I would guess they're shopping him to Kansas City, Tampa. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if they would trade him to the 49ers. You know, in, in they the, would probably not. Probably not. Um, yeah, and then Tua is supposed to start practicing Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so Tyreek and Waddle's value goes right back up to hopefully where uh, where you drafted them at. So yeah. So. Uh, those, yeah, Chua, Chua, if he clears protocol, he's going to play this week. I yeah. mean, like, they, like, they opened his window hoping, no, thinking, believing he's going to clear yeah. the protocol because he can't get back for them fast enough yeah. because it's been a black hole. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, I can't believe you haven't mentioned your favorite quarterback of all time. It's Jameis time in oh, Cleveland. Oh, yes, it is Jameis Cleveland. time in Cleveland. So, Deshaun Watson is gone. I think, I don't want everyone, anybody to get, Ever anybody to get hurt, but I think that does throw Cleveland a lifeline a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, uh, where they can maybe get some of that money back. Um, I think he's done in Cleveland. I don't think he'll ever play for Cleveland. I don't think he's going to play in the NFL again. I, if, if you ask me. So, uh, uh, so DTR came in for Cleveland. He was the number two. Winston was the emergency, and then DTR got hurt. So Winston came in. So. He, the rest of the year, if he's the quarterback, you're going to get 20 touchdowns right. and 20 interceptions. I, 
Already picked him up. Yeah. <laughs> Already picked him up. Uh, I picked him up a week ago just in anticipation of not Deshaun Watson getting hurt, but of eventually they were going to have yeah. to put him in. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't going to be DTR. Like, I knew it. Like, you bring in Jameis because he's the yeah. long-term fix. I think part of the reason they did that was they were protecting Jameis mm -hmm. in case Deshaun Watson got hurt. Yeah. And then it flips. Like, DTR is going to be the backup no matter what. You know, one of those dudes is going to be inactive. Yeah. You know, or the so, emerge. You know, so. You, you mentioned Anthony Richardson. I would cut him and pick up Jameis Winston just because the volume is going to be there. Jerry Judy's value goes up. Elijah Mitchell's value goes up. Uh, Njoku. Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Uh, they're Cedric getting, Tillman. Tillman. Yeah. Um, and Chubb's coming Chubb back. Chubb is back. So, uh, who knows what's going to happen with Cleveland. But uh, for those receivers, it's a, a great move. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. James is going to grip it and rip it. Yes. I mean, it's there's going to be. He, he's 20 and 20 the rest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Interceptions really are not that big of a deal. No. Like, I know people, like, freak out about it. But, like, that's why, you know, in some weeks, Daniel Jones isn't a bad play because, like, yeah. his pick sixes don't really matter all that mm -hmm. much. Although this last week he was yeah. a dud. But, and he's he's a stud, excuse me, stutter a dud every time. My right. body doesn't want me to talk about it. <laughs> that's how much he, as my starting quarterback the last three weeks, uh, that's how much it, it's <laughs> repellent. But if I get to put him in that third spot and not play him yes. and play Jameis and Tua, I will feel much better about my team, yep. especially if I can that get McCaffrey be, back. Yes. I can make a push down the stretch because I've got fantastic wide receivers. Yeah. I've got Garrett Wilson. I've got T. Higgins. I've got Drake London. Yep. I've got Keon Coleman just <laughs> sitting there. Had a great week last week. You know, um, I've got Lad McConkey. That could like, be the the comeback story of the year. I've you... got I've got pieces, man. <laughs> I just need some key guys to be healthy. Yeah. But yeah, I've I you know I I bet big on the rookies coming well, through later. Well, that if you get McCaffrey back, uh, so another guy in our league who's up at the top has Mason, uh -huh. and he's been riding Mason uh -huh. uh, every week, so that hurts him. So there's always a, a give and take with all these moves, which makes one of the reasons why fantasy football is so much fun. Oh, I've already de decided who I'm dropping. Like, yeah. I know exactly how it's going to go. Uh, you know, I, I know exactly what my roster is going to be here. Where are you at on the waiver list? I'm, I'm like 10th or okay. 11th. I'm, I'm like, like, I've got six different claims in yeah. so that I can get something. Yeah, you'll get something. Of, well, because I've got, like, I've got Rattler and O'Connell because I needed quarterbacks. Well, now I don't need them mm -hmm. because Jameis is starting. Uh, and even if Tua is still a week away, I still have Jameis and Daniel Jones. Yeah. So I can clear those. I've got two spots clearing off anyway. Isaac Garendo I'm getting rid of anyway. Yeah. You know, so, like, I've got three spots that are going to be open. Now, are they going to be filled by these waiver claims? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's the game. So, um, and the guy who has Jordan Mason uh, is the uh, – is the grab and stash guy of our league. <laughs> and it He's not first anymore. My son no. is in first place now. Yeah. Ben, but, like, he, Keith is the king of the grab and yeah, stash. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, here we, we're going to hide this guy and never play him. And then here I am here, like, I, you're not going to use him. Like, yeah. I'm just trying to score 100 points, man. I, yeah. I scored 96 points this week. It wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. Everything was bad. So... Um, we've gone through 49ers receivers, Bucks receivers. Um, you know, is there anybody else that kind of jumps out to you? Like, I would say, look, Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, like, I mentioned them. Yeah. Lad McConkey, if you watched last night, um, l l I think it's his time. Yeah. I think it's his time there, he's, finally. He, he's, he's in that spot. Uh, I do think, God, man, these Nats are bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Ty um, Tyrone Tracy is going to – that that split in carries is going to start moving more towards him <coughs> over Singletary. The Tampa running back situation, it's not seen if you're a Tampa fan, but Rashad White is the starter. Mm -hmm. Then you got Irving, but then Tucker looks great too. So they're rotating them in, and you just got to hope whoever you have – I have Bucky Irving on a lot of rosters. And um, he, he did decent uh, last night, but – 
You never know. Rashad White looked great. He's catching gonna, a lot of passes. They're going to play the hot hand. Yeah. And if they're losing in a game, it's going to be Rashad White in the game. Yeah. Because he's going to be catching a he's lot a of better, passes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So his value goes up a little bit with, with these uh, injuries. So, um, you know, th- those are the main uh, spots to look at. The second Cowboy receiver, who do you think it's going to be? It's Jalen Tolbert. Okay. Um, Until they make some sort of move, which, yeah, I mean, so they, it, like it's not going to be Cooper Cup because that's too much money committed to one position. Cowboys aren't going to make any so moves. they're not going to make a trade. So like, yeah, they're not going to make moves. a trade. Like, um, it, like they should have made one for a running back already. Yeah, like in you know, not even like I'm not even talking about a good one, like or one that you know. I'm not saying go get, you know, but Jones is to the point where he's not going to make a move because then that would. Yeah. Look like he, but everybody like was right. Like, if you called up the Jets and said, hey, what about Izzy Abanaconda? Can I give you a seventh-round pick for this guy? Yeah. Just to see how he is. Or call up the Falcons and say, hey, what do you want for Tyler Algier? Algier yeah. You know. I would um, take Tucker from, from Tampa. Yeah, like, uh, you know, like, yeah. what do you – I mean, he's a rookie, too, so, like, you probably have a better shot at getting a veteran. But, yeah. like, you know, like, those those kind of players, like, why are you not – Call call New Orleans and ask about Jamal Williams, right? Because he's had yeah. some starting experience in, in that. Like, he's probably better at this point than anybody you have. Yeah. And I would start Rico Daddle in a flex spot if you have him because, like, he's okay. But, well, the, again. The, the good thing about this week is, it, and the, the NFL schedule is so odd. So, last week, two teams were on a bye week. Yeah. This week, nobody's on a bye week. So, yeah. you should have your full roster available to you. Mm-hmm. Next week, it's two teams again. Yeah. Then we get into some weeks coming up. And, and at this point, you need to start kind of looking ahead. Yeah. There's two weeks coming up where there are six teams off each week. Yeah. And one of those weeks is week 14, mm-hmm. which is, for most leagues is the last uh, week of the regular season. So yeah. uh, it's kind of wacky how they did it this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right. with DFS real quick. Well, yeah, let's go. So there's some DFS before we do some, so, uh, some for sure starts and sits and their over unders. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so for DF, DFS, a sneaky play this week, Bo Nix against Carolina. You can put him in your lineup. He is fifty six hundred dollars. That opens up doing lots of other better things with your roster. Having him in there, he should do well. Uh, McMillan, who we mentioned, they're going up against Atlanta. McMillan is thirty seven hundred. He's going to be in every DFS lineup. Yeah, uh, I have this week. And then uh, Jerry Judy, who we mentioned, uh, forty eight hundred. So those those are some value picks where you should get three or four times your your dollar value uh, there. So look before they go up, yeah, because then like McMillan, yeah, week, yeah. McMill- yeah. Mo Nix is going to stay the same. Yeah, yeah, really. Like he might go up another couple hundred bucks. Yeah, but McMillan and uh, Judy, Judy in particular will, will go up yeah. uh, over the next couple weeks when they're, yeah. they're the number one target. So, so let's uh, do the over unders. Yeah, over unders. To- Which game do you think is the highest one this week? Oh gosh, um, I'll give you some choices: Philly okay. against Cincinnati, Arizona against Miami, or Green Bay against Jacksonville. I'm going to say uh, that, that Philly game. Green Bay against Jacksonville. Really? Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, okay. They think it's going to be a, a blowout, but so Jacksonville had to be catching up. Um, that's 50.5. Arizona-Miami is 47.5. And that's all contingent on yeah. Tua playing, Yeah. which he's not been cleared as of the taping of this show. The Buffalo-Seattle game should be fun. Yes. It's at Seattle. Uh, that's another high over-under. Mm-hmm. Which game has the lowest Cowboys and 49ers? No, that one is actually uh, 47.5. Okay. The lowest is Saints at Chargers. Ooh, gross. <laughs> 39.5 points. So, um, you know, I, I, Cortland Sutton laid a little goose egg last week. He's got to bounce back. So, I think that's a good play uh, in Sardom Uh If you got Knicks... On there, but you should have a better option than Bonex uh, on your on your roster. Derrick Henry, you got to keep playing him. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Yes, I have three fantastic quarterbacks on my roster. Mm-hmm. I've got Jalen Hurts, I've got C.J. Stroud, and I have Caleb Williams. And I think Caleb's going to keep going up, up, up. Yep. This week, I get to play two of them. Which two? Uh, definitely Caleb Williams. Okay. Who are the other two? Stroud and Hurts. 
Stroud, they are playing Indianapolis. Oh, uh, Hurts. Cincinnati defense is horrible. Yeah. So, so I, Hertz I would go and, and Caleb. That's who I would go and with. And sit Stroud. Yeah. What a great problem to have. I mean, it is like, it is a very <laughs> good problem to have. Um, you know, wow. and uh, like my running backs are James Cook and B. John Robinson. Yeah. So, really, I mean, Cook wasn't great last week, but he was coming off the injury, yep. but he played, so that's good. Uh, my wide receivers are more of the issue in that league because uh, Rashid Shaheed is gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a great one that I had. Zay Flowers a little banged up, yeah. so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, T. Higgins is there, and then the rest of it is going to be like it. Uh, um, I had to let go of Lad McConkey, and I, I really regret it. <laughs> but I had like a bye week and injury, like he was out, mm-hmm. and like I had a bye week and injury crash that happened. So I had to let him go, uh, and somebody else got him. Yeah. So it happens. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bummed about that, but it, like there are some guys available in the league who are. I think Jerry Judy's available. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, I, when I get up, when I get up in the middle of the night to pee, is when <laughs> I check the waivers to go through because it's like see what happens, yeah. it's either like two or four a.m. depending on the site you yeah, use. Yeah, I think it's usually four. Yeah, so at uh, four a.m. So like when I get up to pee, which I really shouldn't do because then I can't get back to sleep right away because I'm like, oh hey. But I, uh, every league you're in, I would make a play for Jalen McMillan. Yeah, I think that's going to be a home run. Yeah, well, so. I'll do that tonight. Yep, for sure. Because, <laughs> uh, and he was he was excellent at Washington. So, yeah. Any yep. other issues? Anything you want to unburden while we have like five more minutes left here, Steve? Before we go. No, we already said we don't want to talk about the Cowboys. So no, we don't. So we'll we'll save that for for another time. Um, no, I think I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make a prediction next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ashton Genty, first round pick of hopefully the Cowboys, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, like, well, it's, it's a crapshoot. He will be a first round pick in leagues next year. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It, especially if he goes to a team like the Cowboys who desperately need a, yeah. you know, if he goes somewhere, Baltimore for some odd reason. Uh, Kamara just signed a two year contract with the yeah. Saints. <coughs> kind of surprised me. Uh, Kamara laid an egg kind of last week. Uh, Kendra Miller got some play. But I don't think uh, Dennis Allen likes him very no, much. No, um, but that's another one, you know, if you're looking for, to grab somebody if, you, if you're desperate. But um, they, these weeks where there's no buy, where you can use your full roster, uh, those, oh, those are I, the best weeks. D, DJ Moore is another one of my wide receivers in the oh, team I asked you nice. about. So yeah. I could get the Caleb DJ yeah. double play. Although Roma Dunza, he likes Rome. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, but DJ Moore is a – Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's something we can talk about like, for next year. The, the combo, I saw a, an article that showed that that really doesn't play out that much to your advantage. No. Uh, if you're laser focused on, who i got to get a quarterback and a wide receiver, uh, it's usually better just to go for the, the best player and not really focus on yeah. skipping somebody better just to have that combo. No, I, I will the, never skip somebody better. Yeah. But if it's equal, then I might go for yeah, the yeah, combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's where it is. So, like, yep. if it was, if it was, you know – DJ Moore, and then say, like, you know, Chris Godwin, I'd probably take DJ Moore because he's mm-hmm. more of the number one than Chris Godwin would have been. But if it's DJ Moore and Mike Evans, I'm taking Mike Evans. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that kind of thing. I, 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 want the, I want the touchdowns yeah. or whatever. But, yeah, those, those things are, are good. I, um, you know, I, the, the double I actually like more is not quarterback wide receiver. It's quarterback tight end. Mm. Because if you've got a uh, – if you've got a – a, a tight end who is the favorite target of a wide receiver, you know, or like the the definite security blanket. For example, if I had Dak, I I have Jake Ferguson, mm-hmm. but like if I had Dak, like Jake Ferguson to me is good because that's his like security blanket, yeah, yeah. you know. And there's some tight ends that you just not even like don't do it with Justin Herbert and Will Disley or anything right. like that. But you know, like a Mahomes Kelsey play was good for a long time because that's the number one mm-hmm. guy. So. You know, if, there's not that many of those guys, though. Tight end is a, you know, it's a fickle – tight end is a fickle bitch when it comes to <laughs> to, to fantasy football. Speaking of Mahomes, I have a league where I have Mahomes, and I've only used him one week, and that was week one. Yeah. And – They win games on defense. <clears throat> I have Jane Daniels. And yeah. speaking of uh, the Kansas City defense, uh, I'm in a league where they're <clears throat> still using a the defense. <clears throat> and for waivers, they were available – 
I picked them up. Kansas City's playing the Raiders. Yeah. Um, so that's a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, that's going to do it for us, Steve. Uh, Steve, let me tell, let's tell a quick story. You and I and the wives and your son, your oldest son, Ben, mm -hmm. we went to brew at the zoo, Cameron Park Zoo, the other yes. night. We had a very good time. Yep. Uh, it's the first time I've been to brew at the zoo in a very, very long time. Uh, my schedule is opened up now. <laughs> uh, but uh, I will tell you, as events go, I love events where you can pay for a ticket and just walk around and try different beers. Yes. We need... 30 of those events in Waco. Yes. Like, that needs to be the new thing. <laughs> like, for a while, like, I mean, there was always going to be golf tournaments. But, like, you know, give me an event where we just walk around and get beers. Yes. I think that's that's the event. That's the event. That's I don't need to think anything <clears throat> else about it. Like, the only thing you have to do is how do we get more different beers in the place that you're doing the walking around, drinking beers. That's the only thing. Yes. You know. Yeah. So. In, in a dark zoo, that was... Yeah. <laughs> no animal. A couple animals were out. Most of them so, were, were chilling. Like, so the problem <laughs> is, is that the animals know they're going in yeah. in about an hour. So they have their routine. Yeah. So you got to see them. The first part of it, you got to see a lot of them. Yeah. Um, the penguins never really go in. They're kind of just <laughs> there in their habitat. But uh, I saw elephants. I saw mm. rhino. I saw the giraffes. Um, I, actually, the second time we saw the giraffes, I felt like I needed to have a conversation with them. <laughs> you know, because I'd had, like... All of my beers, and then half of Amanda's. Yes. So. You were feeling good at the end of the night. I was feeling great. Yes. I was, I mean, it was, it was great. We went to In-N-Out Burger. Oh, after? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. We went to In-N-Out Burger. Very and, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could have had food there, but, like, I, I, I'm married to a very specific. Yeah. Like, I like this and this. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's these cool food trucks. I know that one is really good. She's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I know you like it. I'm not. I'm not eating crawfish out of a truck. I'm like, that's <laughs> where you get crawfish. Garrett knows. Yeah, that's right. Exactly you get crawfish you out of a truck. That's, right. that's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching that damn fantasy show. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Tell the world. <laughs> Tell the world our story. See you later, everybody.